Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So we are starting our second Happy to Fly live stream today. And uh, today's <laughs> a little bit rainy. It's a little bit cold. I uh, just decided to do a quick demo on how to fly fish low water. And uh, right now we are going to be discussing uh, flies, weights. I uh, had my notebook here and I just wrote some notes down and uh in our previous video i said something uh, i had a video on taking notes when you're out fly fishing and uh this <laughs> i just finished the other book that had another video so i started a new notebook and i wrote everything down what i was catching what weight i was using and uh, the things that i've learned and what uh the fish are reacting to more than others and uh right now um i'm going to be telling you everything that i've learned and uh, hope to have a good time and uh, just do a quick video on just how to fly fish low water. So um, even before I go on the stream when I'm fly fishing low water, I look on the computer and I look on the velocity of how low the water is and um, the differences between yesterday or today, weather gets involved with it. And uh, today is a little bit rainy, so I, I'm thinking that the water will rise a little bit, but um. Uh, beginning of May and uh, till now, so the end of May, there is a big difference of um, the level of water. And uh, the water went down drastically uh, due to the sh shortage of snow that we had this year in Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania. And uh, we didn't get too much snow, so that means not too much water. And um, so I uh, made a game plan even before I started fly fishing in the spring months where, okay, so we're going to be fly fishing low water all the time. And that includes Penn's Creek. Um, I want to tell you a little about, about that. We fished that uh, this weekend or um, this week. And, uh, and we fly fished Spring Creek, and that was maybe a week ago. And... Um, everything's low and uh, a lot of different techniques from when it was either April or March. So I'm going to get started off with flies. So um, this is, I'm going to be doing a fly tying demo later. In. I'm going to start with flies and uh, either hatches or um, what nymphs are working. And uh, right now before I get on the water, I always either T I tie my flies. I look at the water, how low it is, and I'm going to tie my flies, either what size B or size hook. So in the low water video, Tuesday tip video that we had a while back, and uh, I did, was describing on um, how small your fly should be and uh, how it doesn't make a big splash in the water, which will disturb the fish. And that is very true. I'm using size 16 hooks and, um, uh, and uh, have either it might act maybe fish are a little bit more um more aggressive sometimes in low water but most of the time uh the fish that i've found was using very slim body flies so like either pheasant tails uh frenchies worked and um just very slim flies you put a gun sometimes too but that's even a little bit heavy and um using pheasant tail and everything else like that when you cast in it that drop in that water, it shoots down to the bottom, but it won't hook up as much. Um, crest bugs, ball worms work, and I've been using, okay, as I said again, size 16, even use size 18, and um, the size beads I'm using are pretty light too. Okay, so if I was using a 2.0 bead, <laughs> I was so confused with beads in the beginning, but a 2.0 bead, and I would usually use that for size 20s or size 18 hooks. And if I'm going to 16 or 14, I'd either use a 2.4 or a 2.8. Now, 2.8 is pretty heavy for what's how low the water is right now. So I use it either between a 2.4 and a 2.0. And um, so color of bead um, might involve with it too. So I either have a copper bead. And um, some I, I've learned over the time that copper beads actually act more as an attractor or a natural pattern when it's really sunny. And the fish tend to like that more toward either silver or something like that. Silver works when it's shady and copper works better in the sun. And I just, over time, I figured that out either in Spring Creeks, Vents Creek, and uh, other type of creeks in such a Pennsylvania. Now, um, 
flies. Okay, so now we're gonna now we talked a little bit about size, beads. Um, now we're gonna be talking about dry flies, wet flies, and um, nymphs. Now for dry flies, BWOs have been popping up either size 14 or size 16. Uh, more towards size 14, I'll get into the techniques later, but we're gonna use, I'm gonna talk about size 14 dry flies later. It's a little bit big, but if you wanna go natural, either a single dry fly or two, uh, I'd use a size 16 or size 18, 18 uh, two, uh, size 16 hook. And um, I'm gonna be using, I don't think I have it on me right now, but I, I use fire hole size 16 hooks, um, dry fly hooks, uh, competition. Um, there's no barb on it, which helps tremendously uh, to get the hook out of the mouth, which is so cool. And um, yeah, that's about it for uh, hatches. BWO has been working, uh, caddises too. And um, I just use a, pick, a peacock, um, not dubbing, actual peacock. And I use the rib for the body. And then I just have some um, grizzly hackle and just wrap it around. And uh, I usually use that as a dry fly and a dry dropper. And then for wet flies. Now, a lot of people don't use wet flies so much anymore. And I don't see why. And um, I, a lot of people use either spiders or um, just tiny little uh, terrestrials, as you say, like for ants and things like that. And um, I usually use size 16 or size 18 wet flies. Uh, I use either um, emerging BWOs. So I use like olive dubbing and uh, size 18 or 16, when I said before, and uh, bead, no bead. Um, it's really low. You don't even need to use half you don't even have to have the bead. And um, some, uh, some. Uh, let's see, I think I have the dubbing here. It's kind of like a bluish, flashy dubbing. And I just use that for the ribbing. And then for the hackle, I just use some uh, pheasant tail hackle. I'm gonna wrap it around and that's just gonna be the pupa of the fly. And um, now for nymphs, uh, a lot of things have been working and I'll talk about that later too. Um, so BWO nymphs, so like France flies and waltz worms have been working. Um, either waltz worms with a lead wrapping and size 14 works. Uh, so France flies with size 16 works. And um, the, all those has been working. I mean, you could, pheasant tails, as I said before, it worked tremendously. And um, those are just a little bit about the flies I've been, talk, or have been using a little bit and um, been experimenting with other flies too. And we'll get into that later. So next topic. Okay, so we talked about weight, uh, size hook. And we talked about how the splash in the water may scare some fish. And uh, size hook, uh, techniques. And now we're going to get into techniques. So techniques is very important uh, when fly fishing low water. And uh, you got to change it up really quick. So you got to know how to make the knot quick and uh, uh, different type of knots that have a different profile or smaller profile or bigger profile. So like a clinch knot is pretty big. Uh, another knot you might want to use when you're low water fly fishing or fly fishing low water is called a Davy knot. And it's just a different volume of a knot and fish, seem, it seems more natural and the fish like it. So uh, I just deal with that. And clinch knots I'll use in deep pools and the rest of Penn's Creek too. And uh, we'll get into that later too. So techniques, uh, dry dropper, single nymphs. Um, I rarely use two nymphs now because it's so low, even if I use a 2.0, which is really small bead and or weight. And those are really small, but I tend to just use one. And uh, so just those are just two techniques I'm just using now is either. Oh, also single dry fly too, um, because now it's hotter weather. It's May. A lot of hatches are happening, so that's why I'm using more towards the dry dropper part because you imitate both a nymph at the bottom and then your top tag up top will be a dry fly. And BWO's kind of as I said before, too. And uh, single dry flies, uh, I'd use more of the natural kind, so like size 18 and uh, size 16. And then if I'm dry droppering it and if I need that uh, dropper or that dry fly to be a little bit bulkier so it can carry those nymphs at the bottom. So I use a size 14 and that's what I do for that. And then for some single nymphs, I just use either a 2.0 or uh, maybe even a 2.4 if there's maybe a deep part in the pool and uh, the water where there's a pool. And um, that's about it. That's about it that I'm using. And uh, two flies, a little bit heavy. Um, I just 
deal with the very light methods and uh, that's about it so far. And the fish have been taking a lot of time to dry flies. You gotta be, because um, I never really experienced, um, a couple of years back, I didn't really experience uh, trout eating the dropper before. And uh, I kept on losing them and um, I wasn't expecting it. You always gotta be ready for that surprise might take your dropper too so that's just the thing to keep in mind too because i caught one time i caught only two fish at the bottom and five fish on the dry fly and that is a big difference and a lot of fish i've been getting were in very very shallow water and you can see this fish is really cool is they come up there's a dry fly coming along coming along and then you can see these fish that you never saw before and they just pop up out of their den and then just go boop Take your dry fly. It's really cool. But most of the fish I've been catching in dry flies are small fish, not really big fish. So it's kind of like more like the brookie size. Okay, now we're getting into the type of creeks. Okay, so I fished Spring Creek a lot and we fished pens this weekend. So I'll start off with the Spring Creek. Um, a lot of people fly fish Spring Creek in Central Pennsylvania uh, due to its density of fish. But um, <laughs> They say that it's easier to catch fish in Spring Creek, but catching them is really hard. And um, not really, really hard, but it's harder due to the low water. Uh, you can be anywhere in the creek and you can scare fish that you never saw. You try, you could try every single technique, every single fly in the book, but you're not able to catch that fish. So when I was over there, um, I was just using size six. Oh, very point. I forgot. Tip it. I was using either size 7X or 6X. And um, when I cast, I'm using a dry dropper most of the time. And um, when I go out there, I am executing along the banks. And I never really caught anything in the deeper pools, which is interesting. Uh, my dad and my brother are in the same room as I am right now. But uh, they fished nymphs after me, and they caught fish. So single nymph, and that nymph was uh, either a France fly, a waltz worm. Uh, mocks work kind of too, but uh, they were kind of uh, a disturber in the water. And um, with the natural nymphs, they were more um, easygoing and the fish are like more like, oh, that's more of a natural fly. So because the water is clear and it's lower, so their eyesight increases a little bit more. As I, that's what I think. And that's my prediction, but um, that's, just kind of a thing that use more natural flies in lower water than if you have heavier water, use bigger flies or more of attractive patterns. And Spring Creek, catching all the browns along the bank. Uh, riffles worked. Um, then a part of Spring Creek that we fished that we had some trouble was fly fishing really flat. There's no boulders, no nothing. Only thing there is structure along the bank and which are trees, logs, and uh, just along the bank, I just fished a dry dropper, and I caught a stretch, maybe, I don't know, 35 yards, and I only caught one fish on a dry fly along the bank, and it was a small inky dinky fish, so um, flat water was really low, and the fish, since the water is low, and it's flat, and there's no structure, and it's clear, and the water is moving very slowly, the fish can see your fly a tad bit better and you need more of the natural patterns. And because they have more time to see it than fly fishing a riffle that's really fast. So that's just another tip to fish natural, more of natural flies. Uh, I fish more of natural flies over there at Spring Creek. And now getting into pens, uh, we fished, we had a very short stretch of a stream and my, my, my brother fished and we'll be posting that video soon too. And uh, we fished a stretch of Penn's Creek, the Green Dray Catch, amazing again. Uh, we have another video that we published, I think a year back already. And uh, we fished there and uh, I think I described what flies, what techniques and what the water conditions were. So that's just another video to check out. But now we fished it again. I think it's a little bit different um, because we fished it a little bit earlier in May and I think we had better success. Uh, we were fishing evenings and we fished evening this time too. And now later on in May, 
I'm not sure if it's due to the people fishing there or more people fly fishing and then over time the fish will get, I don't know, smarter of what comes in their path and get a little bit more wary of what flies come by, what they want to eat, maybe, I don't know. Um, there were a lot of fish rising <laughs> and we we're all excited to catch these fish either on green drakes, BWOs, caddises, you name it, they'll probably eat it. But we fished there and the whole time we fished there, we fished probably an hour and a half and this was after school. We fished there an hour and a half and we caught only one fish on a dry fly and the rest were all on nymphs and it was just quite amazing because it was just like there's so many fish rising but they're just not taking what we have i mean trust me i tried everything and remember green drake hatch is not just green drakes it's videos it's caddis it's everything and uh, a lot of fish are probably eating more of the smaller flies i have rarely saw any green drakes got uh, sipped under by trout which was interesting um Maybe they were more full of the green drakes. Maybe they're not liking it. Maybe they want something more, something else. Maybe I don't. Um, some of the flies I used. Were, remember again, I tried six X. Our water was probably low. We got a couple of referrals there and there, and um, we just went in the deep pools, and that's where we caught our fish. And uh, one of the flies that I will be tying now, I have a little bit done. Now I'm halfway done, and those are size eight stoneflies. Now stoneflies is a very popular pattern in Spring Creek over the years I found out and um, if you do a little bit of in, like investigating you can look under rocks you can find stoneflies you look on top of rocks and when they hatch out of the cocoon they leave their um, not carcass but they leave their cartilage on top of the rocks and um, uh, from those when they hatch you can see the skeleton which is really cool and that's just, that's just a couple ways when to figure out when to fly fish stoneflies. And I'll be tying uh, a quick demo for you for this Happy in the Fly video. And uh, I had this on a size eight, um, no, size 10, sorry. Uh, fire hole competition hooks, barbless. It's got a, got a kind of a slant to it. And uh, it just makes it a little bit more realistic look to it. Um, I used rubber legs and I'll just pop this out of the vise here. It's kind of more of a brown. It has some sparkle to it. I don't know. It might entice the fish a little bit. And um, I have some lead wraps on here, like about 10 lead wraps of this lead wire. So 2025. And I like to use this size lead wrap. And um, this lead wrap have been pretty good, and we've been catching a lot of fish and still flies. So um, getting on the legs, just easy, and um, and we'll probably just get finished here. So, And then for the body, you only need a couple ingredients. Thread. Let me take it off at the bottom. Bobbin real quick. Same 70 Ultra Thread. Ultra Thread that I'm using. You can use 142 or 70. And the body, we're just going to be using this chenille. And it's kind of more of like a brown stripe, black stripe color. And this is what I'll be using. Now, I'm going to get my scissors. And uh, we're just going to cut off, I think about, I don't know, four to three inches of this chenille. Now, over the years, I've come to find out there is some hacks when using chenille, which I wanted to show you. And uh, when you're doing chenille, when you're going to tie on your chenille, what you could do is just pull off the, the fluff from the uh, from the chenille, and you just get the main thread, and that's what you want. And uh, I'm just going to tie my thread back on here. And here we go. Okie dokie. Okie dokie, out of chokey. And... Uh, it's gonna cut off our tank here. And what we do is that you have your legs on. And a lot of people ask about um, how long should you leave your legs? Now, approximately, I probably use, I usually use or cut the size of the legs as long as it's the size of the hook. Um, it's a little bit, I, le I left it a little bit long um, right now. I think it's just a little bit easier just to work with when you're putting on the chenille. So I'm going to, I wrapped my thread all the way to the bend of the hook. That's where you add your chenille on. And when you use that main thread part from that chenille, and just tie it on just to the back of 
the fly here. There we go. And then just gonna try not to wrap all the rubber legs and everything. And we're gonna go up all, all the way to to the eye of the fly or eye of the hook. And we're just going to start wrapping our chenille around. And when it, keep in mind, when you're wrapping the chenille around the hook, um, keep in mind that you're forming of where your legs are going to be. So there we go. I want the legs to go kind of more pointing this direction at an angle. I'll show you when I'm done here. And uh, just going to keep on wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. And then when you get to the eye of the hook, where your thread is, just make a couple wraps. And there I go. Just cut the tag of your chenille off. Use it for later, if you have enough. And uh, just going to pull it back these legs here. And uh, just going to do some whip finishes. I have my whip finishing tool. And there we go. And we're just going to wrap about five times. And there we go. Okay, so now your chenille's on. Now you can actually pull on the legs a little bit. And it gives it more of like a buggy look, actually. And uh, I'll show you the difference before and after. I'm gonna cut these legs a little bit shorter um, because most of the fish that I've caught over the time with stoneflies, um, they usually just bite on the legs and don't bother with it. And you won't actually catch the fish. There we go. We just got a little bit off. Now that looks more like a snowfly. There we go. Okay. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to just going to show you this. I just learned this. It's a cool trick. So when you get the legs of the fly, see how they're kind of straight? If you pull on these just a tad bit, you need see that change in color. See how that it kinked up? Just like that. It gives it more of a buggy look. And I just do that for any, every single leg there. And there we go. And there you go. There's there's your stone fly. This is exactly the same type of stone fly that I used in Peddens Creek. Just that color. And uh, very buggy fly. Um, uh, for Spring Creek, a lot of people ask, uh, do you use stone flies in Spring Creek? Uh, unfortunately not. I love fly fishing uh, stoneflies, but um, when you're fly fishing Spring Creek, there's not really a lot of population of stoneflies in there. And by all means, I don't really think there's any in there, um, depending on where you fly fish. Like Fishman's Paradise, for instance, I don't see any stoneflies. And uh, it's just BWOs and uh, tr uh, trico uh, dry flies uh, come out, I think, in September. That's about it. That's about how much I fly fish with dry flies for natural presentations over there. And uh, that's about it. That's a really effective stone fly. And um, let's see what else we got here. I'm just going to look at time real quick. Okay, we got about 10 minutes. Okay, so now we talked a little about the green drake, uh, the stone fly, spring creek uh, techniques, size hooks, weights, flies. And now we're going to be talking about longer casts. Now, um, and this will involve with your leader. So when you fly fishing and you want to target a piece of water or you sight fishing where you see the fish and you want to cast to it, um, you got to do it at a distance because you can't just go up there in low water and just, you're probably going to scare it. And, um, and you probably need a, a thicker leader and a thicker leader would just be a um, that I use. It's just like a size 20 pound, like about three feet of 20 pound, three feet of 15, three feet of 12. Put on your cider material, uh, time a tippet ring, and then time and tip it. And that's just, just a basic way of a uh, thick leader that you can use. And now uh, when you're fly casting uh, longer leaders, uh, you can use a technique called a greased leader, and which is that you get some grease. I don't have it on me right now, but you get a piece of grease and it comes in these tiny little black circular containers and um, put some on your finger and just put the grease on your cider material. 
and then what you if you cast and i like fishing this technique when you cast upstream parallel from you so i'm like if i'm casting to you that's what i'd be doing i want to be doing at an angle i just go straight parallel to you and casting the uh, the leader toward you or you fly with on it and um when you're floating your cider um you're basically almost using a thing a bobber that's just your bobber it's just a little bit different and uh, what it is is that if your cider moves stops or goes under lift up your line and that's how you catch fish. and uh, this is a very simple <laughs> simple way of saying it but um you cast your leader drops and it's moving with current so you gotta control your line while it's coming down toward you and then if you see it hesitate stop or it goes down then what you do is that you lift up your rod set that hook and um you probably have a fish on and uh, you just either use two flies or one fly um you can't really use two heavy flies you probably have to use light flies which is good when you're fly fishing low water so grease leader when you fly fishing low water search it up and um another thing to be uh in mind is clothing so you don't want to be because since it's low water they can see you better so you want to be wearing camouflage green shirts like me green hat blends in the background you don't want to be wearing a fluorescent orange hat red hat um something that's not natural in the background that fish really don't know and uh, that's just another thing to keep in mind um waiting waiting is very important too you don't want to be going into the water and ruining the water uh if you're like stomping in or anything else like that running in i don't know uh, how you get in the water but what you want to do is strategize where you want to go uh what places do you think fish are going to be strategize what side either if you're on the bank or you're actually in the water and if you're getting into the water you want to go in there very soft and what you do is that you don't step in you more of slide in so you just sliding in and then it helps uh not disturb the water as much and won't scare the fish and uh, if you're waiting um in the middle of the water what you want to do is not like stomp like taking a step every time you want to more of glide your feet along the rocks and not stomping every time and that will help uh decrease the chances of of the fish sensing the vibrations in the water getting scared and swimming off so that's just another thing you keep in mind when you fly fishing the water. Um, where are the fish? And that's a big thing too. Brown trout, they were all against the bank near structure and trees, logs, rocks, any type of riffle or um, deep part or deep um, slot in the water. Uh, that's just another place where you want to fish, fish along the banks. And that's where all the trust you are ants beetles anything else like that's when the mop comes in handy and uh, use a green mop or a tan mop and uh, you just work along the banks um if you have nothing really against the bank and you have something in the middle maybe water deep run and that's where you want to be fishing and uh, try to find the deepest part of the water that's where the fish are going to be <sighs> okay now um kneeling Kneeling in the water is very important. And uh, when you're fly fishing the water, when you're fly fishing the water, you want to um, um, kneel as much as possible. If you can't kneel, then just either lean against a branch or a tree or blend in your background. That's the best chance you got. But um, if you, if you ha are able to kneel in a structure or a place or on rocks or a sandbar, uh, try to kneel as much as possible. And that's that's just like a um, when you kneel, you're shortening down your size, so you, they don't see your profile as much. You're blended more in the background. You have a smaller profile, and that's just another way of catching more fish. And uh, these just little type of tips. These are the ones to listen to because over the time, all these tips add up, and that will make you catch more fish. And um, as I said before, too, tying flies, you really know <laughs> when you're fly fishing low water, a lot of fish want different things and they're very sensitive and they're hot and they have low oxygen and they're afraid of predators and they're trying to find that shelter. And um, maybe use uh, dye different type of flies and um, 
and then you will probably catch a lot of fish that way too. Different techniques too. So either from a nymph to a dry dropper, sw quick switch, practice knots with on um, if you're at home, if it's raining outside or if it, even it's cold or something like that, start tying and practicing your knots and that will help you catch more fish too. And then quick wrap, uh, last tip I'm probably gonna give for this live stream lesson is fish early in the morning. <laughs> and um, that's just a big difference. And uh, one time I just fished for 45 minutes, I caught seven fish in the morning. And due to, because of the pressure of fishermen fly fishing over where your spots are usually are or something like that, and the heat and the low water and uh, the shade. And it, there was a big difference. There was shade, it was cool. The fish, are, there was a big difference. There was shade, it was cool. The fish are, probably eating gonna eat more and I caught a lot of dry flies that way too and when we fished in the evening where it was three or four o'clock it was hot and it was hard catching fish I think I only caught three fish in I don't know maybe like in an hour or shorter than an hour but around that time era and it was just a big difference and um even before we left i only caught like one fish there one fish in this weird place one fish in this weird place and if you're fishing in the evening fish where other people fish won't fish so that means you got to practice a uh, different type of cast bow never cast if you need to get in that quirk any that people you know that that's the last place i want to fish that's where the fish are going to be because people are probably going to skip that up and everything else like that so those are just some tips, fly fishing low water. I really hope you enjoyed this live stream. Um, we're probably going to call it a wrap. What do you think, Dad? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you like this. Uh, you definitely use this fly if you're fly fishing in Spring Creek, uh, either this month or next month, probably. And um, Or fish this anytime you want in Penn's Creek. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. And please leave some comments. Be sure to like and to subscribe. And I uh, really love your info and your comments and um, hope to make some more live streams later too. So I think we're going to probably end it around here and uh, really hope you really enjoyed and uh, I'm probably going to call it a wrap. So thank you for watching and uh, stay fishy. Yep. <laughs>